Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we also observe the third Sunday of the season of creation, which celebrates God as creator of the vast cosmic universe. Our presider this afternoon is Father Mark Rezel. Our opening song is found in your gather hymnal at number 922, as we gather at your table, number 922. Always and everywhere, and on this catechetical Sunday, we the Church pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your cross and resurrection signal a new beginning of peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are comfort to those who seek forgiveness and healing. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us a new commandment that we love one another as you have loved us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his properties in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, the master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. To make this as simple as possible, you won't be asked to do this 77 times. Right now, you are not even being asked to accomplish this seven times. 
For a start, it would be great if each of us did it just once right now. It's never as simple as it sounds. We all know that. The biblical writers knew that too. But it's worth a try. The sacred scriptures tell us so. Here it is, a practical application of the Word of God to our lives right here, right now, something that each one of us can do. It costs no money, and it need not take any time. Let a resentment go. Select that which has become an obstacle to your holiness and let it go. Bury the hatchet, get rid of the grudge. Remove the rivalry, finish the feud, quit the quarrel, stifle the strife, banish the bickering. Let it go. In the first reading, Sirach observed that wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. So what is the biblical advice? Loosen the grip and let the resentment go. The Old Testament writer threatens his hearers as he describes the eternal fate of those who refuse to forgive. He counsels us to put enmity aside. And while fear may not be the best of motivations, if Sirach's warnings work, use them and learn to forgive. In the Gospel, Jesus reverses the motivation, but delivers the same advice. It is precisely because we sinners know God's mercy, because we creatures know the Creator's forgiveness, that we must forgive others. That is why we pray the words of Jesus and ask our Father to forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Drawing from the example of the parable, we who know God's mercy must forgive one another. Once we get good at this, we can take Peter's challenge and do so as many as seven times, but today, pick one unhealed hurt and let it go. Jesus teaches that those who know mercy but must act mercifully. So let a resentment go. And I'm fairly certain you won't miss it. For the pastoral activity of the church, the cooperation of many people is needed so individuals may advance to full maturity in faith and continually show their faith through the celebration of the liturgy, through study, and through their life. This cooperation is provided by those who devote themselves to catechesis. Catechesis means simply to echo the word of God. Through the various ministries, catechists have a pro profound impact on the faith of others. They respond to their baptismal call to share the gifts of faith and be a witness to the gospel. Today, as the church celebrates Catechetical Sunday, we recognize all Catholic school teachers, youth ministry leaders, volunteers in OCIA, Promise, pre cana baptismal prep, Bible studies ministries, and parents who are the primary catechists to their children, as well as all those who formally share their faith with others. In this celebration, we thank the Lord for giving us such co-workers and pray that through the Holy Spirit, they will receive the grace they need in their service to the church. Lord God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim his message of faith 
hope, and love to all nations. In your goodness, bless our brothers and sisters who have offered themselves as catechists for your church. Strengthen them with your gifts that they may teach by word and example the truth which comes from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. By virtue of baptism, we are called to follow the master teacher, Jesus. Together we now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. As the heavens are high above the earth, so is God's kindness to us. Trusting in God's goodness, we present our needs. That the church may be a model to the world of reconciling our differences, showing how to respond to one another with love and mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead nations will relinquish the embrace of wrath and retribution and turn to ways of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may grow in consciousness of the great gift of creation and all its elements, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That catechists, will be strengthened in their ministry to share God's word and the tradition of the church with those entrusted to their care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those affected by recent natural disasters around the world will receive the assistance and comfort they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, the parishioners of St. John of the Cross, will open ourselves to the possibility of forgiving those in our lives who have hurt or abandoned us and work to make our relationships whole again, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, including those listed in our bulletin, will know recovery from illness and relief from pain, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died, including Tom McCormick, will experience the everlasting kindness and mercy of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we remember at this Mass, especially Patricia Marvin, George and Gertrude Gallagher, Robert and Loretta Moody, Frank Gostella, Caitlin Marie Richardson, Jim Artovage, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, who commands us to forgive from our heart, look upon these contrite prayers and show us your mercy. Through Christ our Lord.
Please join in singing number 1054 in your Gather Hymnal. Forgive our sins, number 1054. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name, may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all that you do in the world through you, our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim.
You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought for us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we Until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all of the bishops and your entire people, just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all of the saints, and with our brothers and our sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command. Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus, the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Please join in singing number 149, found in your music supplement, Where Charity and Love Abide, number 149.
let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thank you, Please join in singing number 1052 in your gather hymnal, The Master Came to Bring Good News, number 1052. <laughs> 